Hi, this is Denise Donaldson of Safe Ride News Publications. Thanks for watching this webinar to learn the basics of the latch manual. While I've made many other presentations about latch that refer to the latch manual, this one just provides a simple overview of all the basic components. We know that the latch manual is a hefty book and many people have it that haven't even cracked it because they don't know where to start looking at it. And that's understandable. So the goal of this 101 presentation is to help give you a foundation for how to use the manual in any situation. Whenever I do a presentation on this topic, I always like to start by stressing that the latch manual is a great resource, one that I think is essential, but it's only one of many resources that should be consulted. Chief among those others, of course, are the instructions for both the car seat and the car, as well as the car seat labels. And both manufacturers are likely to have further information on their websites, including FAQs and videos. The latch manual fits in among these resources because it can provide additional information from the manufacturers themselves, as I'll discuss in this webinar. The cover color changes every two years when a new edition comes out. And while this webinar is using the 2021 green book as an example, the basics covered will be useful to know for any manual going forward. To give you a little background, Back when Latch was first being developed in the 1990s, the founder of Safe Ride News, Deborah Stewart, had a brainstorm. She was dedicated to helping families understand the value of tethering car seats, and so she was happy that all forward-facing car seat models would soon have tethers. But there was a problem, because only the very newest cars at that time would have tether anchors. But there was also an opportunity because most cars on the road at that time could be retrofitted with tether anchors to upgrade them to allow tethering. So she set about to make a resource that advocates could use to identify the tether anchor parts and educate caregivers about how to get them installed. That was back in 1999. And so the first edition was actually specifically about tethering, just called tethering child restraints. Two years later, when latch was available in the newest of cars, the manual expanded to include information about latch positions as well. Over time, it became apparent that even more information would be useful. So chapters describing usage were added, as well as installation tips and quick reference tables. Eventually, the topic of latch weight limits also emerged and became an important topic of the manual. Fast forward to today, and we've come to realize that what we put in the latch manual overall serves many purposes, including complementing, clarifying, or even correcting some owner's manuals. It also uses uniform terminology written in tech speak, if you will, and consistently answers yes or no to many of those common questions that technicians need to know, but that might not be mentioned in a manual. So I like this graphic because it accurately shows not only growth of the book with the larger and larger circles, but also that the core elements, they're still part of the manual. So while elements are added and refined over time, each edition retains the basic information from the last. But that doesn't mean that older editions should continue to be used because for each update cycle, each topic is reviewed. And while new information is added, many of the past information is reviewed and may be revised and even corrected. So that's why on that two year cycle, Safe Ride News, we as the editor, we collect the information from the car seat manufacturers and the vehicle manufacturers. And we do this through direct contract contact with them so that we can ensure that the information provided is current and up to date. In other words, we don't pull it from a website or even from looking at manuals, but straight from the manufacturer. Safe Ride News then suggests edits but the manufacturers all sign off on the final copy. And we consider information from other sources too, like researchers and the government. And very importantly, some suggested edits come from input from CPSTs in the field based on their findings as to what would be more helpful or clear to them. So in that way, I like to stress that the latch manual is something that we can all use and participate in. The input from all these sources goes into the four basic sections of the latch manual. The book starts with eight chapters that are written by Safe Ride News, 
with some input from manufacturers, followed by Appendix A information provided by the car seat manufacturers, Appendix B from the vehicle manufacturers, and then Appendix C, which Safe Ride News develops using information from Appendix A and Appendix B. So let's take a look at each of these sections. We'll start by looking a bit at the chapters. Now, I like to think of the latch manual chapters as being like our industry's textbook on latch. You can see the eight chapter title shown here. A tip for finding these chapters easily is to fan the pages out to see the eight chapter tabs as shown here. Now, I know I just said that the chapters are like a textbook and that might not make them sound super appealing. However, I really encourage you to check them out. The first five chapters shown here um, could be considered a basic introduction to the parts and how to use them. So this is definitely good reading for any technician who's still at the beginning of a learning curve. So if you come right out of certification class and you wanna learn more, but you know what? I would even encourage veteran technicians to, re to reread these chapters as they do provide many helpful usage tips. And while I hope you'll read all of those chapters, there are a couple of topics in them that I want to single out. One is this page 20 of chapter three that's about weight limits of lower anchors. This is a single page summary that covers why there are weight limits for using lower anchor attachments, as well as the detail of how to follow that guidance depending on when the car seat was made. So I'd like to note this page for people because it's a succinct tutorial on a topic that I know has been confusing for many people over the years. Another section that may be of particular interest is on pages 44 and 45 of chapter five. This section describes how to tether in pickup trucks. As CPSTs know, tethering in trucks can be particularly tricky. So these pages can be helpful as a complement to owner's manual instructions and the model specific information provided in appendix B of the latch manual. I also want to highlight chapters six and seven specifically because these chapters include manufacturer provided details that will be important to follow in particular situations. So here we have chapter six that covers retrofitting tether anchors. And it starts with a four page introduction to the topic of retrofitting in general. And then that's followed up by a supplement that gives brand, vehicle brand and sometimes even model specific information about older cars and adding tether anchors to them. So in other words, this is where some of that, that original information from the very first latch manual now resides. In addition to the brand information, some brands that have free installation programs uh, through their dealerships have provided their specific service bulletin information as shown on the page on the right. So for instance, for Mercury, it says see page 65 for the details of their program. And so on page 65, you find some of those details, including the program code. As the years have gone by, it's become harder and harder to get tethering, tethers, anchors retrofitted. And that's partially because some parts have run out, certainly, but it's also because the concept is less well known. Even at the dealerships, they don't always know what, what we're talking about when we say we want to retrofit with a tether anchor. So being able to provide a vehicle owner with as much of this information as possible is very helpful toward upgrading their vehicle to allow tethering. And as I mentioned, I also wanted to talk about chapter seven. Chapter seven is all about tethering car seats that are rear facing when doing that is allowed by the manufacturer. Because this is not a very common part of instructions for most car seats, because most car seats don't allow it, this chapter can be super helpful as an introduction for learning more about this topic. It also includes many usage details specifically from the manufacturers that allow rear tethering with some or all of their products. So you can see here, there's some warnings specifically from Diono and Kleck where they don't allow a certain uh, uh, approach to doing the tethering, uh, but others that allow tethering in the rear facing position don't say that. 
And those types of details from the manufacturer are scattered throughout the chapter. And also as shown on the page on the right, the chapter ends with a table that summarizes all the car seat models that allow rear facing tethering, even some that have expired or have been discontinued down here. So this really is the, the complete story of all the ones that have ever or do allow rear tethering. Now let's move on to the appendices, which are shown here. As with the chapters, a tip for finding these quickly is to fan the book to look for the long gray edges. Let's start with Appendix A, which covers information about car seats from the car seat manufacturers. While this information should not take the place of referring to the owner's manual, it can definitely complement owner's manuals. There are many ways in which it does this, including adding to the clarifying adding and clarifying information, as well as sometimes providing additional supporting information such as images. While most car seat manuals today are pretty thorough, there is some information in Appendix A that you won't find in the owner's manual. And some of that is not because it's missing from the manual, but because CPSTs need certain information that maybe is beyond what would be in an owner's manual. And so you'll find that here. Also, in many cases, the information provided can be a cross-reference to matching information from the vehicle manufacturer in Appendix B. Appendix A includes all car seat manufacturers on the market that have unexpired models on the market with latch. So we remove, if a, if a car seat has been discontinued and enough years have passed by that all models should be expired, that would get removed from Appendix A. But we do, so that basically does mean we include nearly all manufacturers with just a few exceptions, such as ones that make only booster seats that don't have latch, for instance. Each one of these manufacturers has what we would call an entry. And so we'll go through what a typical entry contains. First, before the very first entry, there's this page that provides an introduction to all the entries. So this is something that I think people frequently just go right past, but this will help you know what you're even looking at in this section of the book. So it's gonna start off with some material some information on how the material in the um, appendix is gathered. And it has some of the acronyms that are used will be identified here. And there's a little more about the layout of each entry, which I'm gonna be talking more about in a moment. But if you are ever confused about why uh, an entry is not listed, uh, a particular bullet is not listed, or what is supposed to be in that bullet, this is where you'd go to look. There's also some of the normal usage points that aren't stated explicitly in the entries because they're just a given for all the manufacturers. And then lastly, there's a listing of ways to stay current. So each entry starts with a section of bulleted latch details for the manufacturer's car seat models. And the first bullets, as highlighted here, cover details that apply to all car seats in the company line. Those will be followed by bullets that are specific to certain model types. I could go into a lot of detail about each of these useful bullets. However, for now, I'll just point out one example in, that's underlined here in red, which is helpful instructions for changing latch between rear facing and forward facing mode. I think that many people are not aware that this helpful detail is available here for manufacturers with convertible car seats. So I hope you'll take some time to look over all the other bullets as well. After all the car seat type bullets are done, there are additional sections that are also very useful. Just one of those is highlighted here, showing you that you can find information about recalls on any unexpired models under that brand. And that would be latch related recalls. There's several other sections too that you saw on that prior page that are listed here, including guidance on reducing the risk of entanglement, latch use that may vary when a car seat is sold in Canada or is used on a school bus. The manufacturer's policy on the use of inflatable seat belts is also included there. And there, if they have a QR code provided um, for finding 
um, owner's manuals or videos, that's included here. So you would use your smartphone app to scan it and it'll take you straight to owner's manuals or usage videos when that's available. And at the very end of each entry for manufacturers that sell forward facing only convertible combination or all in one models, there's gonna be a listing of all those models with the car seats weight. This is the weight that should be used when latch instructions involve subtracting the car seat weight from 65 pounds to find a weight limit. So note here, there's a lot for Graco listed, but we don't include rear facing only car seat weights because none have been introduced to the market that have any limit on the use of latch. They simply, the upper weight limit for the harness plus the weight of the car seat never exceeds 65 pounds. And so we have never had a need to really know the weight of that car seat. And likewise, boosters aren't listed here either because with a booster, it is the seat belt that restrains the child. And so weight, latch weight limits simply don't apply. And finally, I'll point out that there are a couple quick reference tables at the beginning of the appendix. One covers all car seats that have at least some usage with a tethering requirement, and the other covers instructions regarding the use of latch with booster seats. Each of these tables simply summarizes the details that are included in each of the manufacturer's entries. So we just gather up the information and put it into this one place as a quick reference list or a way for you to kind of review the status of each of these topics. Now let's move to Appendix B. And again, we can ask, why is that so useful? And it really is important in a number of ways. Again, it backs up the vehicle owner's manual and often uses more standardized language adds clarifications, and sometimes makes corrections or updates. Even more often than Appendix A, Appendix B includes information that does not appear in the owner's manual. Appendix B will also alert people to latch-related recalls in vehicles, which you'd be surprised how many of those there are, and includes some details that must be cross-referenced to car seat information in Appendix A. Naturally, because we had it in Appendix A, we're going to have the cross-reference match to Appendix B. Appendix B covers 52 vehicle brands, each one having its own entry. So we call them entries in Appendix B as well. And while a few vehicle brands have entered the market since Latch began, several have left the market and are no longer operating. But Appendix B includes all of these because it should be noted that when new cars are added, older cars are never removed since cars, unlike car seats, do not expire. So I'm not taking any time to take out old cars because we may still continue to see them. Each brand entry starts with a set of what we call bullets. Um, and a description for how to use the bullets is provided with each entry, which is underlined up here in red. These bullets are very important because the information that's contained in them applies to all the vehicles of the brand. So this bulleted information it's kind of like it should be added to any model specific information that gets looked up. So this is where you're going to go to find such things as the latch weight limits over here, the center use borrowing here, and um, general policies, for instance, about head restraints, and you can see several other topics. If we move down to the table that lists the models itself, I want to start by pointing out that each entry has a key to the acronyms used. So the key is the same for every entry, but I repeat it for every single entry because we want this to um, be easy for you to find if you need it. So I know this slide looks a bit like a hot mess, but I just wanted to make sure that it's clear where to find the de definitions of some of these terms. Um, many acronyms are used in the table to describe what types of latch parts are available in each of the seating positions, or if none is available. Other acronyms are used in the notes section. So I, I will say, in general, I do prefer to spell things out so you don't have to use a key. But when it does come time, you can see down here, owner's manual is still spelled out because there was space to do that. But because space is at a premium on this in the latch manual, there are many times when we do use acronyms and I want you to know what those things are meaning using the key. 
After the bullets and the key is each entry's model specific tables, as I said. And I say plural tables because if the manufacturer has both two, or say the manufacturer has one or two or more than two um, rows in their vehicle, there's going to be separate tables for each of those types because, as you can see there, if we had a three row vehicle, we would need a different layout for the table to show those. So if you do not find that the models are listed alphabetically, and if you don't find the model you're looking for, consider whether you might be looking in the wrong table. Like if it's a three row, you'd have to hop over to the next one and then look that one up alphabetically. So what we're looking at here, of course, is just a two row table. So you can see that it will tell you what you can expect in terms of how each model is equipped with latch but also be able to be sure to read the notes section for all that, that good model specific advice as well. And I'll note that we tried, uh, Katrina and I tried real hard this year to make sure that for the model body type that we listed the number of doors and the type of vehicle it is consistently because when we're working remotely with people, it's very helpful to kind of have an idea before going in what number of doors you have and what the access you're gonna to have to seeing inside the vehicle. Um, if that information could not fit here without expanding the uh, rows a lot, you might check in the model notes because it might be over there instead. Like Appendix A, Appendix B also has some quick reference tables. The two page table shown here provides the lower anchor and tether anchor weight limit for each vehicle brand. And two other tables break out the model specific tether anchor limits for Fiat Chrysler vehicles which includes um, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, uh, as well as Chrysler and Fiat, because those are model specific. So, uh, whereas the others are brand wide. So those would be on the next page. So now that we've covered both Appendix A and Appendix B, I'd just like to reiterate that many topics in these appendices kind of interrelate with one another. Uh, and these, for example, include lower anchor use limits, like the weight limits for those. And that would be specifically for car seats made before 2014 when weight limit labels became required on the car seats, because then you'd be just looking at the car seat. But for those older models, you'd need to compare between the two appendices. Um, and then there's also, also other topics like whether the tether strap must or may twist to be connected to the tether anchor, whether a seat belt may be used as a tether anchor, and any guidance for reducing entanglement risk. And um, you know, if you're uncertain about it, what I mean by any of those topics, because uh, those are kind of high level topics for sure, but they are all described in the chapters. So check out the, um, the table of contents or the index and read more about those topics because you're gonna find information about both those things in Appendix A and Appendix B, and you'd have to compare between the two manufacturers. And I do wanna point out too on booster use with latch, uh, whereas we, we in the past always had to check what the vehicle and car seat manufacturer says. Um, for this latch manual, the 2021, we asked manufacturers to explain more about why there would be a limit for the vehicle manufacturer to attaching a booster with latch as long as it was okay with them the car seat manufacturer and it didn't interfere with proper fit. And what we were told by the vehicle manufacturers, even the ones that formerly said you may not use boosters with latch, they all said it's now okay to use a booster with latch if it's okay with the car seat manufacturer and proper fit on the child is achieved. So finally, let's talk about the last little appendix, Appendix C. This appendix is just a short review of latch in the center seating position, because that's really one of those places that CPSTs end up working a lot. Parents tend to want to use it, but it can get a little bit confusing when it comes to latch. So to create this appendix, we gather up the relevant information from Appendix A and Appendix B. And in general, it kind of provides a tutorial on the topic of using latch in the center position and it gives the specifics about use in standard and non-standard center positions. So let's go through each of those. 
So here's the first page. It's like a mini tutorial on center use. And I like to point this out because this topic can be a little bit confusing, especially for someone who's a new technician. I think it'd be also, it can also be helpful when trying to come up with the words <laughs> to explain this concept when educating remotely, such as by phone or teleconferencing. Then there's table C1. I think a lot of people use this one. This is all about center use in non-standard situations. As was mentioned before, many topics must be cross-referenced between the car seat and the vehicle manufacturer's policy. So this table provides assistance in doing that using this cross-referencing table. And just to be super clear, what we're talking about is this situation in which there are standard latch sets provided in the outboard positions but someone wants to install using latch in the center by borrowing those inner bars of each of the outboard sets. So numbers two and three. As shown in this image, that would entail an installation that has bars set wider than the standard 11 inches. Because regulations require strength testing by pulling straight outward like those orange arrows show, um, both the car seat and the car manufacturer have got to approve this because this would mean that your forces are being placed at an angle rather than straight outward. So going back to that table C2 about borrowing, it's going to list all the vehicle manufacturers and the model years for which the manufacturer says it's okay to do this down along this left hand side. So here's the brands, the models, the model years, and then the space between. And then there's going to be across the top, the car seat brands that say yes. And so you see that those are going to be organized by the maximum amount of inches, which is going to be cross-referenced with the inch spacing. And then it'll tell you yes or no here. So important to note here is that any car seat or car that's not listed, that just means that there is no situation in which you may borrow if either one of those say no. And then down here in the green, these are your um, footnotes that apply to the car seat brands because there are some qualifications and you'd want to check those out in the um, footnotes here. So there's also a table C2, which is one I don't think is used quite as much, but it's also super interesting. And that's a two page table that lists all car seat models that have standard latch in the center position. So each of these is grouped by the type of arrangement or configuration it has, such as whether it stands alone, like these over here, or maybe it overlaps as this does, or shares a bar or is squished together so that the two center ones are the standard width. All right, so that covers all the sections of the latch manual. Although I didn't show it, I should mention too that there is a table of contents and a glossary at the beginning and an index at the end, which will help you find things, as well as citations for any statistics noted is at the very back of Appendix C. I hope that you're gonna find this information makes it much easier for you to crack that book open and utilize your manual to its full potential. Please note that any updates between printed editions are posted at the Safe Ride News website as well. So please go to saferidenews.com and under Latch, you can find Latch Manual updates. Also at the very bottom of the homepage, there's a place where you can sign up so that we would send you an email to let you know if an update has been posted. So either you can go here and look for it, or you can wait to be notified that you should go here and look for it. When you go to the Latch Manual Updates page, um, you'll find that the most recent one, the latest version is posted here, but also note that you'll want to click on Download All to see the full PDF of all of them. For this 2021, there is a, a, an update posted, but it is just, that's the only one there is, but you'll wanna download all to see all past ones as well. 
And while this information is fresh, it would be a great time to take the latch manual quiz, which is available at Safe Ride News website as well. By scoring a 16 or more out of 20 on the quiz, you'll earn one CEU. However, even if you don't need a CEU, the quiz has been made to help reinforce what you've learned in this webinar, as well as learn even more. So anybody should take it, and this is where you can find it under Latch Quiz. Uh, and note here that there are two quizzes available because it's early on in the 2021 Latch Manual, so we still have the 2019 available until June. And that's the, the normal routine is that when it gets to be 2023, the 2021 will be available until June. So thank you again. Please stay tuned for any future webinars and thank you so much for all you do to help families keep children safe. This is our contact information. If you have any questions or comments, observations, concerns, ideas, requests, corrections, truly, we love hearing from you because it is through your observations out in the field that we learn what is needed uh, Katrina and I do our best and we do our own local program. So we're in cars too. We're learning all the time and using the latch manual. But um, truly, we, we get so much information from you all out in the field as well, that it's really a collaborative effort. And we really appreciate working together with all of you.